I'm now joined by SMP MP for Caithness, Sutherland and Easter Ross, Dr Paul Monaghan. So as we just heard there from a Labour MP, the vote is actually all about what the SNP wants and not actually what the Scottish people want. That's not the case, clearly. This is uh, what, exactly what the people of Scotland want. We need to look back to the June 23rd referendum. 62% of the people of Scotland voted to remain a part of the EU. That number has grown uh, significantly since that vote. Uh, we've had numerous polls showing that there's support for independence. Today, the representatives of the people of Scotland voted in favour of a referendum uh, for Scotland's independence, and that's what we will have. We will not sit idly by whilst our economy is driven off a cliff by the UK government. 69 votes to 59. Not exactly an overwhelming majority, though, today, was it? I think it was a very decisive vote, actually. It's, it works out at 54% in favour of the, the, the referendum. A significant majority when you look at it in contrast to the UK-wide vote on the referendum to leave the EU. When do you think that referendum then should go ahead? Because it's all really up to Westminster and Theresa May, isn't it, who says that really you should wait until we know exactly what Brexit is all about. No, I don't think it's up to Westminster. It's up to the people of Scotland. And Nicola Sturgeon, my colleague, has been very, very clear. The referendum will take place between uh, the, the autumn of 2018 and the spring of 2019. That's the ideal opportunity, the ideal window. We will by then know what the conclusions to the Brexit negotiations are going to be. Theresa May has admitted that now. And we will know what the trade deal is as well. So everybody will be fully informed. The people of Scotland will have the chance to have their say on what they want their future to be. But a lot of the Scottish people, as we heard from that Labour MP, are very concerned about what's happening now. Too much effort being made about what's going on in terms of Brexit and the independence referendum. Domestic issues in Scotland, the deficit, health care, all sorts of economic troubles facing uh, the Scottish Government. Well, I think the economic troubles that Scotland's experiencing are entirely due to the mismanagement of Scotland's economy by the Westminster Government. They hold all of the economic powers, not the people of Scotland. The Scottish Government has no borrowing powers whatsoever. It's prohibited, in fact, in law from borrowing, so it cannot have a deficit. So if Scotland has a deficit, we should be looking to London as the source of that particular problem. Scotland, as an independent country, won't be governed or managed in the way that the UK chooses to do it. It'll be governed in a, and, and managed in a completely different way, according to the wishes of the people but of Scotland. But in independent Scotland, you want to be part of the EU, and sovereignty a big issue in the Brexit debate means that surely Brussels will still have a huge amount of uh, control over what Scotland does if it becomes uh, part of the EU again. I think uh, Scotland's membership of the EU, if, if we choose to continue down that road, will be seamless. There won't be a break. But the crucial aspect is that uh, Scotland's economy depends on exporting. It depends on access to the world's largest single market, the European Union, and it depends on the customs union. We cannot afford to lose 80,000 jobs and a, a drop in income of £2,000 per person just because the UK government wants to isolate itself from the world. And what about Scotland isolating itself from the UK, the rest of the UK? Because uh, what we understand is that the access to the single market, well, what that is worth is nothing compared to something like four times more value to Scottish firms. What can be done across the border? Well, I think that figure is debatable, to be honest. I mean, what we're starting to understand now is that most of Scotland's exports, which are significant, are passported through England, through the UK, and that balance is added to the UK's balance of trade, not to Scotland's balance of trade. So the figures really need to be looked at very, very carefully. Uh, and we can absolutely say Scotland's growing market is the European Union. It's not the rest of the UK. Dr Paul Monaghan, thank you very much indeed thank for joining you. us. Good to talk to you.